Hello and welcome everybody to Drawing with Mary. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to draw today. So I have a whole bunch of magazines that uh, I got for free while I was traveling. And some just local. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to draw my inspiration from. Day. Um, here's a visitor's guide for Shasta Lake, Mount Shasta. Picked this up on my way through Mount Shasta. The other uh, inspirations that I like to draw from is like real estate books because you get not only look at some really cool real estate and see what's out there for sale and how much it is because I am an advocate real estate aficionado as you say i'm not a professional or anything i just love looking at real estate let's see what else we've got here um, here's another magazine from bellevue here's another magazine uh that is distributed locally here in alaska and it has a whole bunch of really good deals oh that's kind of scary but um, they also have big, bright, color, colored pictures, so to say. Look at this pickle. That's a cool little design, eye catcher. Um, yeah, you just don't know where you're going to draw your inspiration from. A lot of times I go places or see things. I'll take pictures with my phone. Something inspires me an old magazine. Look at this guy. He's so sweet. He's been a part of the community for such a long time. He runs the local Tasty Freeze out in Jewel Lake. But yeah, there's just, I keep a collection of books. I really love drawing dogs and animals. But I keep a collection of books because you just don't know what's going to inspire you another kind of books that i like too are these uh books that you get um sent to you in the mail this one's a little waterlogged as you can see but look at that really cool bedspread all the colors and designs in there i mean you could make something really fun with that i'm not sure what this one's kind of trash though i think i might I might let this one go, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm going to sketch or draw today. I was going to do watercolor. Um, I don't know. I was thinking something abstract. Because I like doing abstract things. The reason I like doing abstract things is because you can just create your own little worlds and your own imagination. And that is so much fun for me, is to be able to create your own worlds, your own imagination. I drew a lot of uh, inspiration from like Bob Ross. He did mostly landscapes, um, which were amazing, but he would make his own little world. Happy trees, happy little cabin. You know, you just have endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. And I am a huge uh, believer in, you know, I think there's different realities out there and different things we can't see in our everyday life as humans. You just absolutely don't know what's out there. So when you can create something on canvas, and just look at that. That's awesome. I don't think that would come out very well with colors, though. But you could turn it into something neat. Oh, that's really neat. Maybe I'll do something like this. Maybe um, like a horse, kind of in this style. I really, really like this style here. So this has just inspired me. This looks like... Um, a picture of some kind of art installation 
Winterfest. Let's see, what is this? Seattle. So they always have something cool going on in Seattle all the time. Lists all the different events. And some of these magazines are old, but this looks like a uh, current magazine. You can go to some of these festivals and stuff. So I have decided on taking inspiration from this light up lion statue or whatever he is. He could be glass. It looks like he's fabric though, of some kind. And they lit him up. So cool. Okay, let me put these away. And the other thing too is when you start to gather magazines and everything like that, um, you have to be real careful in your library to be conscious about how much room you have to actually keep uh, magazines and stuff because they can totally overrun you over time. Um, let me just make sure. Okay, they've got a good shot here. And I have my trusty Let's see, HB pencil. This is a softer graphite pencil. It's easier to sketch and it's easier to uh, sketch with and it's easier to erase when you make those mistakes or lines that you just want to get rid of. Well, and this, this guy, I need to get a better sharpener because they, this one either breaks the ends off <laughs> um, or it just doesn't get as sharp. That's not too bad. Sharp as I want it to get. But I do like see how it's breaking the edge off there. I don't like that. Anywho, well, let's see what we got going on here. I got my line here as reference and I think what I'm going to do, um, I love the colors. I love the light colors and the darks through here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is um, a horse head because horses are close near and dear to my heart and um, not that lions are, but then I'm going to put a little creative twist into it, maybe put some vines or some really cool trees or something neat. Um, look at that. That would be really awesome as like maybe a background or something that comes up. We'll just have to kind of wait and see how this turns out. And you know, as an artist, you just never know how things are going to turn out, what they're going to look like when they're done. Excuse me, taking a little drink of my coffee there. Um, so you just kind of have to start. And I think I want to have a horse with a bit of action to him. So his mane, maybe we'll be able to see his his head and his mane kind of come up maybe through here and just kind of come around and maybe have this ear perked up here and uh, coming around and down he's going to be a little bit tucked in with his neck it's looking like is what it's coming out to be Have his cheekbone come out over here, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm not really liking this area here, especially the way, um, especially the way if we want movement out of this particular. I think I might have drawn his head a bit too big, so I'm gonna come back down and reduce his head. On his head here, on a nice archway here. We'll come down here, the nose. Just by reducing his head size a little bit, maybe we can get a little bit more action out of this. Um, just a little bit more action out here. Maybe he's got his. Uh, his foot up, his leg up. It's kind of nice. And bring him up and around, staying within the smaller 
idea that I had. I really like to use the whole paper, and not just draw like a little itty bitty horse. I like to use the whole paper, and of course this paper is pretty small. This one is um, seven by 10. So working on a smaller canvas here or a piece of paper, however you want to call it. I'm just gonna bring his ears up like this and maybe have his main fat lock come around here. So now the idea is really starting to develop here and what he may look like. I'm just building right now. And that's why it's so important to start with a softer pencil, a pencil that you know that you can um, erase pretty easily because I'm going to come back in through here with the eraser and uh, um, get rid of some of these lines that I don't particularly need or I don't think worked. And uh, Slowly building here, maybe his nostrils here. Put a nice, his eye is gonna be here. We'll put another eye right here, maybe. And I really picture him as like, I don't know, maybe a gallop, but the way his head is right now, it looks like to me, I almost want to scrap this whole thing because this horse to me, the way he just develops, um, he looks like he's kind of standing and looking. So I think this is going to be a waste here, which is okay. You kind of, you know, unless you're really going from a picture and you're going off of a picture maybe that you're um, wanting to do exact, exact or close to exact. Um, the pictures, if you're doing this from imagination or from your head, um, it's gonna turn out the way it's gonna turn out unless you, you really have a strong, strong vision in your head how this is going to turn out. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm just completely working off of my head, my imagination. I drew a little bit of inspiration from the picture that I saw. But other than that, um, sometimes these just develop the way they're going to develop. And you are kind of just the catalyst in between what the artwork wants to do. And I love working like that just because... Uh, you get it turns out like you just don't you didn't even know um, but I will do some other artworks um, where I am working off of a photograph I'm working off of uh, something very specific and I know the parameters I know exactly how something needs to turn out and I will be a lot more specific on how I put the subject or the image uh, on the uh, the canvas that I'm using, canvas or, or picture, whatever. Um, let's brush some of these things off. So it's it's coming along. It's starting to develop. Starting to develop. This is what I like to see, and it's really cool because you're almost just creating something. Something that you've never seen before. It just comes out on its own. It's it's really cool. So much fun. This is the type of artwork that I, I just really enjoy. He's got a little bit of a smile going on, but most of the time horses don't have a smile like that. So I'm just gonna bring that down. This shape of his nose is a bit odd too, so I'm trying to correct that and kind of make him a little bit more uh, maybe not realistic, but, uh, we can have a little bit of a 
a smile. Why not? It's our own, it's our own world here, just like Bob Ross would say. It's our own little world. Give him a little bit of an eyelash there. And what I'd really like to do with him, because he looks just like kind of a majestic horse, is he's going to have lots of long hair that comes up. And goes around here. I love horses with long flowing manes. There's something something really cool about that. Maybe bring one piece of hair down, another one. And he's gonna be more of a cartoon type horse. There we go. They want to put something cool around him for a background and I'm not even sure what that's going to be yet um, he's just gonna have to develop a little bit more for me to uh, make that decision on what's gonna look best I'm gonna put a little bit of mane over here but I think the majority of his mane is going to come down here and just kind of flow like that. He's going to be one of those horses with like awesome long flowing hair, which I wish I had. My hair only grows to about shoulder length and then it just decides, well, that's enough and it stops. Not everybody gets to have long, majestic flowing hair, <laughs> which if you have long, majestic flowing hair, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I wish I could do something like that, grow something like that. I don't know. It's just the way my body says this is the hair that you get, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So no complaints here. But when I do do my artwork, I can, I can have an imagination. Uh, like that. I'm going to lift his eye just a little bit. Uh, and bring his cheekbone out a little bit. And he is a little, you know, he's he's more of a horse. This is a char character. Um, this is going to be something uh, not a realistic. Nothing realistic. But he's got some personality going on, which I really like. Uh, bring his eye out a little bit. He's got a... And then, so he is, he's doing good. He's about where I want him to be. So now the next uh, phase of things is I really want uh, something cool for the background to fill this area up. I don't really just want to wash back there. I kind of want what I'm thinking is like um, vines maybe. Let's see. I have this really cool magazine. Um, this one right here. Small spaces and gardens because old place that I lived in had a very small backyard, small little garden, and I've had this for such a long time. What is this? Well, since June of 2022. So I guess I haven't had it that long. It's November now, 2022. But, I mean, look at this. This is awesome inspiration right here. It's just this little potted plant here. It's really awesome. Um, I'd like to put some vines maybe around his uh, head, background, a tree would be cool. I mean, this tree right here looks awesome. Um, gosh, these small little background. Ugh, they do these so cute. Look at how these are kind of coming down. That That's really inspiring. And if if you're an artist and you're trying to come up with ideas, magazines are so awesome. I, I do Google. I do love the internet images. Um, 
I love it. But um, there's something tactile about being able to um, see a picture in, in, in the full ground and having, oh, full ground, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, just, just having something tactile in your hands to look at. The picture is much bigger. Um, and you know, other artists might be drawn from uh, different things too, uh, from Google as well. So I mean, you may have a lot of copied images or whatever. Look at this really cool tree, that's awesome. But what I'm gonna go back to is I'm really gonna draw inspiration from um, this little potted plant right here. I don't know what, it just speaks to me. So I'm gonna set him off to the side and I'm gonna try to decide how I'm going to integrate that into here because um, there's a lot going on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just take some of these leaves and kind of put them around everywhere and we can maybe put some of these up on the top. Let's see. All you can do is try and uh, you know, if it doesn't turn out, there's always an eraser. <laughs> there's always an eraser. That's that's why I love working in graphite. Um, I don't always work in graphite. I've worked in uh, so many different um, types of mediums. I've done um, charcoal, acrylics. Um, what else? I've done all kinds of different uh, mediums, oil painting. I've done uh, even sculpture. Sculpture is a lot of fun. So I do like um, wood, woodworking. That one's a little bit more difficult. You really have to be really patient for working with wood. Um, I've done what else have I done? Clay, uh, concrete. Um, I'm just gonna build these little leaves up and see how this turns out. And uh, I'm not really doing anything crazy, just making a little forest, leaf forest behind him. Um, drawing some inspiration from my little magazine here. And uh, maybe there's like a little vine that comes out and has some more leaves on it. You just, you never know. You never know. I don't even know what kind of plant this is. It's a made up plant that uh, I've made up here in my head, but I'm drawing inspiration just from life, from magazines, you know, I've never done anything like this, and um, let's see, um, I don't want him to be like, you know, maybe he's eating that, but want it to be more like, this is like a background type bush he's standing behind. So, let's make a little vine that kind of goes up and around. And we'll put a leaf here and a leaf here that kind of goes off the side. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing other than just following kind of what I'm seeing in my mind's eye. Maybe I'll have some more leaves here, like a big one. You know, the bigger you draw these leaves, the less tedious this whole thing will be because coming through here with color is gonna be, it'll be fun. It'll definitely be like a meditating moment, meditating time. 
Um, so yeah, I'll bring another big one over here. Kind of do that. Have another one kind of up here. And another one coming out here. I'll have some kind of leaf going through there. Spines. We can always maybe have some leaves coming off here. Another one behind here. Now I'm just kind of playing. Totally just playing. Define his mane here so I know when I come back in. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'll bring another leaf up here like this. Another vine like this. And um, there are these kind of interesting little flowers and then these are really cool these leaves that kind of come up over the top and I think that's what I'm gonna kind of try to do here just bring I don't know how this is gonna translate as far as like is this gonna look like a plant I think what I'm doing here is I may get into trouble with his ears in the same shape that this is happening here so I may want to Put a couple little flowers. And, uh, see, I'm not sure if that's gonna turn out. We don't know, we just, we don't know. We don't know what we're doing. We're just having fun and that's, when you're an artist or you're wanting to become an artist, that should just be your number one priority. Um, I went to college and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I started my whole um, college venture in um, finance and business because my dad was in business and he's a businessman and I learned a lot from him. But, um, and I thought, well, I knew I was good at drawing and I enjoy drawing. Um, but I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. And I thought, you know, if I go to school for art, I mean, there's no, how am I gonna make a living? <laughs> and it's, it's very true. Um, you have to have a lot of tenacity and self-discipline to make any kind of money, actually with anything. If you're a business owner, if you're a, whatever you wanna do, unless, unless um, you know, there's a lot of people that just enjoy, they go to work and they have a nine to five or whatever. Um, and that is awesome because you don't have the, I'm gonna do a little bit of, uh, sharpening here. You don't have the weight uh, of your shoulders or on your shoulders uh, to carry a business. And I've I did that. I worked in the private sector, and I enjoyed that very much. But I also enjoyed, um, you know, being my own boss. So. Um, it's all in what you want to do, but if you want to just do this as a hobby or just something relaxing, you know, don't get stressed out about uh, what uh, when you're making artwork. And sometimes, uh, especially the times where I'm trying to make a, a realistic 
piece of artwork, something that actually looks like a real car or a real dog or a real person and the details have to be there. I find that um, pretty stressful because I'm paying attention so much to, uh, you know, what's going on and how a shape or a line works, what it looks like. Is it, you know, is it looking exactly like how I want to frame it up? Is it looking exactly like the subject? And I do enjoy that type of work, but I also get a bit stressed out when I'm drawing that and uh, putting colors in. So I am gonna call this good. And when I make artwork like this, um, there's no stress. Cause I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm sitting here and just daydreaming about my little horse here and where he's at. He's in a garden somewhere, hanging out. Maybe uh, looking at another horse or looking at you or, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And he's gonna turn out and all this is gonna turn out the way, uh, the way he's gonna turn out. There's, it's all up to the imagination. It's, it's all up to the way uh, your artwork is turning out. So I am going to clean these lines up a little bit. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to do a watercolor here. And sometimes watercolor does not uh, cover these lines, which is okay. You know, if you want your lines to um, to show through, it's completely up to you. It's completely up to the artist. Sometimes that really works with a piece you're going for. I mean, it really does. It um, it makes it. Sometimes it breaks it, but it also, it can make it. So, um, but what I've decided to do is just do a little bit of, um, a little bit of cleanup. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. There he is. Um, okay, so I need to grab some water for my watercolor. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> we're back. So, here is my palette that I'll be using. Uh, pretty basic palette, pretty basic watercolors. These are uh, mid range to cheaper watercolors. Um, I am a beginner in watercolors. I did not study watercolor in college. I was a sculpture and drawing. So, but I find it so much fun to, uh, let's see, I'll just get this ready. What I'm doing is uh, taking my brush and really saturating that. I find it fun to play around with different mediums, you know, like, what color should we make the horse? I don't know. We can make him any color we want. Um, let's let's make him like let's go with these brown earth tony colors uh, for him. Maybe even a little orange in there, and maybe uh, we can lighten him up. So maybe we'll start skin tone color or. 
We want to go lighter. Lighter to begin with. It could be sunshine yellow. I don't know. But if you start with dark, you can't layer as well. So I want to start with light. Let's. I haven't used this color a lot. It has some yellow in it, looks like. It has a nice little earth tony colors. And I'm just going to go ahead and wash. I'm going to go to wash here. And uh, well, that's not a bad color, it's not my favorite, but since it's a light color, I'll be able to uh, put some highlights in on this and kind of just wash, do a wash. Wash it out. And we can make his mane, I might even make his mane like a really nice dark color, like he could be a bay, maybe. And then that would really bring uh, the colors out in the green leaves. Um, that's a possibility. So we're just going to kind of get in up in here. I'm going to bring some more water into it because I really am I'm trying to wash this color. Actually, this color is quite pretty almost be a palomino but not quite like i said I'm, I, I'm really into horses i love horses i've worked with horses a lot good part of my life i've been involved with horses i used to have horses of my own and life complications happen and I don't have any of my own, but I still get to work quite a bit with other people's horses sometimes. Um, so that's a blessing. Really been blessed in that area of my life to have animals in my life. Animals are so freaking cool. I really enjoy spending time with all kinds of animals, mostly the domesticated ones. I've never been on a safari or anything like that, but dogs, cats, um, horses, of course, horse, of course, of course. What else? Um, trying to think. Uh, and small, like rabbits. <laughs> we have some rabbits here on uh, the place, the place I live at right now. We have rabbits. And uh, they're kind of wild. Uh, they live outside. Um, they're not in a hutch or anything. Um, I kind of live in more of a rural area. And what happens is um, you can definitely, definitely tell the difference between a wild rabbit, like a jackrabbit, they're a little bit more thinner, a little bit uh, more stringy, I don't know, longer legs, thin looking, they're just, they're more scrappy looking, you know, they're just elongated, their legs, and they just look like, and they're fast, you know, when you see a jackrabbit or a wild rabbit, you know, they're, they're built for speed, they're built to, uh, to run from predators and um, up where I'm living right now in this rural area uh, unfortunately people have dropped off <laughs> domesticated rabbits um, and they just they drop them off because there's lots of woodland where I live and then and they have them as pets and they decide they don't want them anymore and uh, oh, there's like a little hair in there and uh, then they're out in the wild, you know, and they're well equipped to be outside and take care of themselves and um, eat off vegetation, but they're domesticated and they're a little bit um, more compact and chubby and they don't move very fast. Um, they're easily domesticated if you were to go ahead and 
you know, grab one up and 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 maybe uh, love on it, and it would easily become a a uh, domesticated rabbit. Um, but yeah, so you have to be really careful if you're gonna get a pet, especially a rabbit. It's a lifelong commitment, and for whatever reason, if you can't take care of your pets. There's always somebody out there that would love them and want them and adopt them from you. So be responsible. <laughs> this is my PSA for the day. Be responsible with any pet that you get. Um, if you can't keep them for lifelong, then find them. Take the time to find them a good home. Oh, so he is turning out like a Palomino. Uh, the way this is drying, which is pretty cool. Like, let's... Actually, I may just come back in here with a little bit more of this color, darken him up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush out. There's a little bit of coffee grinds in here. That's what this is. I was uh, making coffee earlier and uh, the grinds got in there, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so let's go in with some nice light green because we can always make some more definition with some green that's um, maybe darker for some accents. Okay, here we go. Um, and the some of these that I'm looking at are leaves that I'm making reference from are kind of uh, kind of have a different bit of a different color going on like some browns and stuff in these bigger leaves so we will start with a nice light base coat green come in here like that oh, water's running upstairs And yeah, just like that. And you know, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for the background of these leaves. I may, I might come in with a darker color to kind of make them pop. I'm not sure yet. Okay, and with that, let's see. Got some of these leaves. Doo -doo -doo. So this is where the tedious part kind of comes in. You're kind of just washing, but watercolor is a game changer because if you were trying to do this with any other kind of medium, like an acrylic paint, um, you're gonna be here for hours <laughs> and watercolor is just so cool you can just kind of wash over your image and uh, you can always kind of get the color up if you don't like the color with a paper towel but you know what I think there's maybe even a better way of doing that I'm just like I said I'm a beginner at watercolor um, paper towel has always been good for me but I'm sure there's a much better way of doing things. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, it's coming out really nice. I'm really enjoying the colors here. And from what I've learned, which is just watching a whole bunch of other artists work with watercolor, what they say is put your light colors on first, which would be 
your like greens and blues and everything else and then you can come back in with um you can come back in with uh darker colors and really get the depth that you want so um i'm just following that rule of thumb right now because like i said i'm a beginner and you know the more you work with a medium or the more you just enjoy and have fun with your artwork the more you learn like you just you come up with your own little techniques on how to do certain things and it's it's a lot of fun I missed that one so yeah uh, artwork has always been something where I can just sit back I can relax I can think about all the cool shapes colors <laughs> yes maybe that's cheesy for some people but for me, I'm, um, makes me happy. I'm a firm believer in doing things that make you happy. Because, you know, life's all about that. You gotta enjoy life. You gotta work hard. But also, um, you know, have some happiness in your life. My goodness. So I'm going to try to fill maybe a little bit of this area in. Um, I'm not quite sure with what color. I kind of just want an easy going. I think I'm just going to go with like a light blue or blue here. But probably this light blue. Um, I haven't used this one before. So this is going to be a baby blue looks like to me nice little baby blue I like to put a little bit of color off to the side and the reason I do that is so that I can um, oh yeah it's nice I can come back in and not have uh, so much color on the bottom or on the tip of my brush an opaque, it's not so opaque, I guess you would say. All right, here we go. Not sure what I did there, but I'm just gonna fill that in with blue. And I'm gonna go over some of these vines just with the blue, and the reason being is I'm gonna come back in with maybe a nice dark brown. Um, yeah, maybe a nice dark brown. <clears throat> and, you know, I do like these kinds of paintings. Uh, and these images, they're, um, I don't know, very innocent and straightforward type of artwork. But what I really, really like to do, um, and what I'd like to start doing is bigger pieces, either murals or uh, just bigger pieces and abstract pieces, which I quite enjoy. Um, there was an artist in New York um, and it was, I was just watching, you know, shorts on YouTube, little short videos. I don't know who the artist was, but it was a girl. Uh, she was showing her apartment um, to a YouTuber. I don't know if any of you are familiar with those YouTubers that um, ask people in New York, how much do you pay for rent? And can I come in and see your apartment? And um, Yeah, so she was an artist. She was a young artist and she had this awesome loft, like amazing loft. Um, excuse me, I need something to drink. Coffee time. Yeah, she had this amazing loft and her paintings were probably like seven or eight feet tall, like four or five feet wide. And she had them all laid out on the floor in this big loft and, um, 
it just like inspired me. I was like, that's that's the type of work that I would just absolutely love to do. So I am striving to get um, maybe a, an area in my home where I can clear that out, <laughs> clear some space out so I can have some huge uh, pieces and make those and abstract, you know, her stuff was abstract, which was just amazing. There was just like, you, you know, there, it wasn't of one, any one subject. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna come in and clean my brush off again. And I really would like, I really would like to have this horse have a darker color hair, maybe? I mean, it does look good as a Palomino. This is obviously, I've got a little thing here. This is a Palomino, definitely. But we can easily turn this horse into a bay by bringing some darker colors in. And then that's what I'm gonna do. Um, black is such a no-no, but I can maybe, uh, and why I say it's a no-no is just because it is, it's absolute. You know, it's it's absolute. Like once you put this black down, it's it's gonna be down. <laughs> it's gonna be down there. Um, trying to maybe put a little bit more water in there. Let's see. Might be a good idea. Let's see. Okay, that's not too bad. I can always come in and bring. darker highlights in here with uh, more opaque is what I'm trying to say but I do I'm, I'm liking the darker color for his mane here and a lot of the time you call that a bay bays usually have a little bit of dark in their ears too typically um, so here we go with the dark color. Ooh, see, that's really opaque. I'm gonna try to um, wash this out just a little bit more. Bring it in, bring it in. Okay. But yeah, you see the difference in how much watercolor you bring in is really going to make a difference here on what what this is going to look like. Although I do like the absolute color, the absolute opaqueness. But yeah, I'm going to bring that in, wash it out just a little bit more. Let's see. Booyah. Booyah. There you have it. And I can come in, I'm gonna come in with some marker afterwards here and really make some defining marks. And I think what I'm gonna do is just bring in a little bit more dark here. A little bit more opaqueness, as they would say. So that he matches his fetlock matches his mane. Okay. Bring in a little bit of darkness here. Softness to the eye. You always want your eye to be nice and soft. Otherwise you could have a killer horse. You don't want a killer horse. You want you want a nice horse that you would Maybe you want to spend some time with riding or grooming or just spend some time outside. Beautiful horse like this, doing whatever, you know. You don't want one of those wilds, although wild Mustangs are gorgeous horses, I will say. But they are wild and they will stomp you to death if you get in their way or you get in the way of their babies. <laughs> you gotta be really careful. Okay, 
So that looks pretty good to me. I might come in with a little bit more dark here. A little bit more opaque. This. This is going to be really dark. Yeah. I really want this to match what's going on upstairs on the top of his mane here. Otherwise, you are going to have problems with trying to match that up so the eye goes, oh, okay, the mane starts over here, comes down here on the other side of the horse's neck. If there were two different colors, you might, you know, the eye goes, what's going on there? So bring, bring a little bit more dark up here too. some of these lines. Bring in some of the darker. Okay, so I've missed here with the green. So, um, and the blue. So I'm gonna come back in here with some of this uh, blue-green and just kind of fill this area in. Give it some color. Give it some color. Don't forget about me. And this purple here uh, was from, this is a sketchbook. Um, so it was from my last sketch and my last uh, piece of work. Okay, so we've come this far, thus far. Now you notice how my water is getting quite dark. I did bring another water with coffee grains in it. Again, the coffee grains serve no purpose <laughs> other than uh, I kind of messed up and got some coffee grinds in this cup earlier today with my coffee. So what I'm doing, I just brought two cups because once your water starts getting really cloudy like this, um, you're going to pick up some of that color in your next um, colors that you're, you're choosing. So I'm going to bring in some color here. Let's see. These were really cool orange and red flowers, so I'm gonna bring those and, and bring them up in here. Um, we'll see how that turns out. It might look weird. Um, so orange and red, let's do the orange, like a really nice orange here. I kinda of like that one, but let's, this one's a little lighter. We can always come in with a darker. Oh yeah, now it's bleeding. No. Okay, see so this is where the paper towel comes in. Get a little paper towel, clean that little thing up. Maybe even dry, see how wet that is. I don't want to go everywhere. I'm just trying to put some color here. And maybe I'll put one over here, just a little bit of color. And then just to kind of bring just so it's not weird that the flower is only there. I think I'm gonna and add interest. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring in this orange color. Uh, kind of make, I don't know, little flowers around everywhere. Why not? And the more interest you add uh, to your artwork, uh, more people are going to want to look at it and be like, wow, what's that? Uh, uh, so I've heard. <laughs> there are some really awesome artists that are minimalists, which I love too, like Banksy. Um, he's a minimalist. Uh, he has gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work. Uh, he started as a street artist spray painting. 
If you're not familiar with his work, absolutely check him out. He is the real deal. I, uh, I love artists like that. Just awesome, 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 awesome artist. His style is really cool too. Completely opposite than what this style is right now. Uh, <laughs> style. It's a style. Let's just say that. It's a style. So, all right. Let's come in with some brown. A little bit darker brown because we're going to turn him into a bay horse. Um, I'm thinking, let's see, we did that. Let's go a little bit darker. If we get down to this dark brown, you're really looking at uh, just opaquing him out. I don't know what how else to describe it other than um, he'll just be so dark that you can't even get any type of uh, defini definition and shadowing, you know. So I'm just going to come in and uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely a nice bay color. And just kind of go and define his nose a little bit more. Maybe come down here. And I'm just playing. I'm playing, playing with a little bit of shadow. Coming in here, maybe under his eye. And we're going to do a little bit of washing out. Creating some shadow. Maybe up here in his ears too. Like I said, this is just like a little world, you know. It's a little world that. This horse lives in and maybe the shadow is not perfect maybe things aren't perfect here but it's it's your little world it's your little animal your little character that you're building and you can do whatever you want and that's the cool thing about art that is the most awesome thing about art that's why i love art so much it's really anything you want to do is yours to do and then other people get to see it and sometimes they don't like it sometimes they like it I don't know it's all up in to them some people think oh my gosh this is the coolest piece of artwork or it's the trashiest piece or whatever you know what to each their own I say to each their own. I'm gonna shadow this out just a little bit Maybe the sunlight's coming this way, so he's got a little bit more. Wash this area out just a little bit more. Okay, nice, nice. I'm liking where this is going. A little definition here. Some muscle definition. Okay. Very cool. Time for a little coffee. Coffee break. Okay. So now, at this point, let's do a little bit. Um, let's go in with this. This nice uh, dark brown. Um, I don't want it to be too saturated. So I'm going to come in and put a little bit of definition on the vines. These vines that are hanging out over here. Just kind of definition in the vines. I don't want to take away from the subject, but just bring a little bit of design. And I don't know how this is going to turn out. Sometimes I do have these ideas like this and then they don't turn out very good and you go a certain certain way certain um, point in your artwork where you can't really go back and that kind of sucks but you know I'm okay okay with this here these colors Okay, adds a little bit of something. And then these tall leaves up here are really neat. Um, let's see. I'm going to bring a little bit of 
bring you back in here. Just so we know what's happening here. It doesn't get left out. Don't leave out the green. Okay. So, with these um, really neat leaves that are kind of going out, let's see. They have orange and yellow and red and some black in them. And I don't want to make them too intricate. But what I think I'm going to do is put some darker green through them. And then maybe a splash of a really dark orange or red. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. So let's go with a little bit darker green. This one looks good. That one looks good. Oh, I don't think it might even be the same color. Let's go with this one. I like this one. And we're kind of just going to, it's going to be really opaque, crazy opaque. So let's bring that opaqueness down. Okay. So I'm kind of just going to do this. This one didn't get painted. Naughty, naughty. Okay, just kind of. Oh, these are background leaves. <laughs> They're here for the enjoyment of the eye. Just a little bit more intricateness, I suppose. Okay, sounds cool. All right. This one turned out a bit dark, these ones. That's okay. All right. Very cool. So let this dry off for a minute. And then I'm going to come in with these really cool markers. Uh, all of these are white highlighted markers. Let's see, I think this one's white too. I think this is black. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Right on. Okay, so, and then I have the white ones for highlighting. So let's go ahead and uh, start marking it up. This is gonna bring a lot of definition to this piece right here. And uh, it just makes everything so much cleaner. It brings another dimension to everything, too, I've noticed. This is a new um, marker I just bought. I haven't used it yet. So, yeah. Always brings a whole another dimension to your artwork when you um, outline it like this. And uh, another artist that I really like that I watch on YouTube a lot, a lot is um, Ten Hundred. He has such a cool style, all of his own. He does murals, he does paintings, um, he draws these really neat characters, and it's just a really neat style. Like you can, if you watch some of his stuff, um, and then you saw a mural or something with his artwork on it, you it, it's just so distinct, his, his style is so distinct, his characters are very distinct. 
you'd be able to spot his artwork um, before you even knew it. So, um, I really like artwork like that too. Um, let's see, you gotta be careful with eyes sometimes. You wanna leave that little sparkle in the eyes. Sparkle in the eye. Okay. Come down and we'll define his neck just like that. Define that. We'll do some defining of his hair here. This is some of my favorite parts is just outlining the work that I've done because it really just pops. It makes everything pop. And now um, I'm not sure if I'm going to, I think I will highlight all of the, uh, the branches and everything. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. It's going to take a minute, but in the end, it'll be so worth it. So yeah, this is the type of work that becomes a bit tedious, but um, it's kind of like you can sit here and zone out, think about life, your life choices. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's so many cool things um, you can do with your artwork and then just the relaxing part of it, getting to see things come to life is a lot of fun. And sometimes I get really impatient and I want it to be done, but it's all about the process. It's all about the process. Um, I just started my YouTube channel not too long ago. It's a lot of fun making videos. I was contemplating on what kind of videos to make. And this is something I enjoy doing. It's fun. It's non-controversial. Controversial, however you want to say it. Um, I know in our world today, where there's a lot of craziness, people with their differing points of view, you can just sit back and maybe watch somebody draw and it inspires you to draw. I think that's spreading just a little bit of coolness back into the world. I'd also like to do other videos like travel or adventure videos because I love to travel. Absolutely love to travel. It's one of my favorite things to do. Although it's nice being at home too, but traveling is pretty awesome. I've drawn a lot of inspiration from traveling as an artist. Um... That's important. I think that's turning out okay. Uh, I'm gonna try the uh, white highlighter after this. See how that turns out. I've never done the white highlight before. And I'm not sure, it's gonna be kind of an experiment to see. how this is going to turn out. 
I'm not sure. But yeah, maybe I will do some um, travel videos in the future and see kind of where you can gather inspiration as an artist. Because not only is it fun to travel uh, just to draw inspiration, but um, it's fun to travel just for the dang experience of it. Like, who doesn't like seeing new different things? I guess there's people out there that don't like it. But it's awesome. That's all I can say about it. Mm -hmm. All right. We're coming down the pike here, you guys. I'm not doing those little wispy things, you know. The strokes are kind of important because you're looking at... Uh... Let's get this ear. I didn't get the ear because it was still drying. Let's see. It's not too bad. It's a cutesy picture, you know, something fun, cutesy. Okay, now I'm going to do is, I've never tried these before, but I'd like something to uh, highlight, do a highlight. So, and then of course I have these stupid long nails. They're not stupid, they're pretty, but sometimes they drive me absolutely bonkers. They are really pretty, but uh, yeah. Sometimes they make it hard. Oh, let's check it out. Oh my God, okay. This is white. I'm just gonna try here on this little. Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't start on the artwork. I like what it did. I mean, I don't know about this. Oh, what is that? I mean, it's good. Oh my god. Oh my god. You don't want to. Holy shit balls. Let's just put a little highlight here. You don't want to press down too hard with this one. <laughs> it's uh, definitely one of those markers you gotta be really careful, Oop. really careful with. I don't know if I'm gonna highlight them all the way everywhere, but I'm gonna have some fun with it, that's for sure. Let's highlight here, let's highlight there, let's highlight under his eye. Put here, why not? I don't want it to be distracting though, you know? Seems like you could do a lot of cleanup with this white. Highlight different things. Huh. This white is pretty cool. It's pretty powerful as far as drawing the eye. You know, I like that.
pretty neat. I'm liking it. I'm liking the white. It adds a little bit more depth to what we got going on here. It's pretty cool. It does add some depth. I'm wondering uh, what kind of depth that would add with these leaves, you know? I don't think the leaves really need it, do they? pop a little bit more. It's an interesting marker. It's very stiff. Kind of put a little bit more movement uh, and depth into these leaves here. And yeah. Not too shabby. Let's put a couple more. So, you know, artwork is done when you say it's done. And I say it's done. <laughs> So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign it. There we go. And there you have it. She done. I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see. Well, it's going to be a long video, but I will make it into a short as well. Around my mouth. About everything and anything. And uh, yeah, so this is Mary signing off. I hope you enjoyed my video. Hope you enjoyed some uh, good old coffee talk. And um, yeah, subscribe and like my channel like everybody says <laughs> if you've made it this thought far thank god peace <laughs> and uh yeah see you on the next one bye